Hello and welcome to SLU. I'm Paul Cox and I'm part of a global community uh, to teach the next generation how to explore space. Uh, now then, if you want to join our mission, uh, then why not become a member? Uh, or maybe buy a SLU certificate gift card uh, membership for a budding space explorer to use uh, SLU's online telescopes, which are located on top of this mountain that we're looking down at. So. Uh, it's really a great gift and it's not too late for Christmas. Now today, uh, we mark the latest in our decade long run of live celestial broadcast. Now, I hope you joined us uh, last week um, for, wow, a couple of magical events. We had the fabulous meteor shower, the Geminids, first of all, on Sunday. And then the following day, uh, we had our live coverage of the South American Great Solar Eclipse. That was one to uh, remember. But anyway, today we've got two celestial events to celebrate. Now, over the next hour, we're going to celebrate the uh, still sun. Uh, that's the December solstice. I'm not calling it the winter solstice because it's only the winter solstice for us lot up here in the Northern Hemisphere. If we call it the winter solstice, we're, we're ignoring all of our viewers down in, uh, in the Southern Hemisphere. Anyway, because it's summer solstice for them but we are going to have live views we're going to step through those in a sec um from our solar telescope at the institute of astrophysics of the canary islands now after we this is although this is kind of a a scientific event and we are going to look at uh, these beautiful views uh, from our solar telescope a solstice actually has a lot more to do with spiritualism and maybe culture. So to kind of um, hook into that, after we witness the moment of the solstice, which is at two minutes past the hour, we're gonna be joined um, by Caroline Kinsolving, award-winning yogi and actor, who's gonna guide us through uh, some really simple exercises that we can do while we're kind of enjoying the live view. So I know a lot of you are getting up very early uh, in North and South America to join us about half past five in the morning or something ridiculous. No, half past four, I think, uh, in the morning over there. But I also know that we've got a lot of viewers in India tuning in today. So welcome. Uh, so if you're into a bit of a yoga session and just some breathing exercises, maybe, uh, we're going to go through some of those. Caroline's going to walk us through what we can do when we're kind of desk bound as well. But anyway, in a second event today, in a little over nine hours time uh, we're going to be back here for an extremely rare celestial event even rarer rarer than a total solar eclipse we are going to be watching the great conjunction and that's the two mighty gas giants jupiter and saturn as they come closer together in the night sky than they have done since 1623 uh, now then, uh, just before we move on i just want to say uh, if you're a school teacher or parent and your school hasn't yet joined our education program, then drop an email uh, to our director of education, Russ Glenn. Uh, that's russ at slu.com. Um, we partnered with Jason Learning, with OpenStax, with hundreds of classrooms already. Um, they're already exploring space with the SLU's huge robotic telescopes. And one final plug, um, if you enjoyed our total solar eclipse last week, we are giving you, SLU members, uh, the opportunity to join an adventure of a lifetime. It's a 20-day polar odyssey of exploration. Next year starts in November, runs into December. Um, just a few of us are going to be fortunate enough to witness uh, uh, 2021's only total solar eclipse, which is on uh, December 4th. Uh, so join us for that. There's more details here up on the screen. But that is going to be uh, a pretty wonderful once in a lifetime adventure, I reckon. But anyway, listen, what are we going to watch today? Well, we are celebrating, as I say, the December solstice. Now, this view here, we're looking down from 10,000 feet. This is in the Canary Islands, uh, which is a small chain of islands off the west coast of Africa in the Atlantic Ocean. And it's home to the largest optical telescope in the world. It's also home to SLU's telescopes, which SLU members control uh, every night. And this particular camera is perched right on top of the volcanic peak, Pico del Tedi. And we're looking down. Uh, so the ridge that you can see in front of us, just on that ridge, roughly in the centre, you might 
just about make out some little buildings, some little white buildings, actually they're huge white buildings, uh, on the ridge. And that's the observatory, that's the Institute of Astrophysics of the Canary Islands. Now what we can see after that is we can see the clouds. The clouds are below us, we're so high. There's a funny black smudge on the horizon over towards the right. That's the neighbouring island of Gran Canaria, uh, which is just a, a huge caldera, a huge volcanic basin. And there, top right in our view, is the sun, the subject of our celebration today. Now, it's, um, what is it? It is 9.35 a.m. in the Canary Islands at the moment. And you can see the sun kind of looks way off to one side. And indeed it is. Uh, because today, being December solstice, the sun rises as far south as it gets during the year. It's also going to culminate. We'll explain more about that a little bit later. Uh, but let's, for the moment, let's take our first look. Let's zoom in a little bit. Let's go to the observatory panorama, if we can, studio. Now, this is a, a live cam which is set up that shows us, wow, there's the Canary Islands Observatory in its full glory. Now, you can see uh, just right of centre, big dome there. Behind that, you can see that peak. That's where our last camera was, right on the top of Pico del Tedi. Over on the right hand side, you can see the ocean, the Atlantic Ocean again, and you can just see another black smudge on the horizon. That's the neighbouring island of La Palma. This island is Tenerife, and you can see all of the professional telescopes there. And just off to the left, one of those little white buildings, that's Slew's Observatory. We've got three domes there uh, with a whole stack of telescopes in there. We've got our mighty half meter telescope, uh, which is absolutely uh, glorious for spotting things like comets and really faint objects, and a whole bundle of other telescopes that members control every night. And it's really, really simple. Uh, it's, it's what well, one thing that you can say about the SLU community is it's really diverse. You know, we've got people who are into science and like to do scientific work and research with the telescopes. We've got all of our school students who are doing slew quests, these are kind of learning activities where they use the telescopes and learn about astronomical phenomena. Uh, but we've also got a whole bunch of members who just love sharing their enthusiasm for the night sky and collect uh, wonderful collections of uh, celestial objects, images. But anyway, uh, let's take a quick look at uh, our other cams. We'll zoom in a little bit closer. Can we see the slew domes a little bit closer, the EAT cams? There we go. There's another one, uh, which is now this is this is looking from one of those big towers There we've got the sun so low. I can't describe to you. I, I usually go there, you know, at different times of year and to see the sun so low to the south is it kind of it's a bit weird. I went out for a walk yesterday with my dog and it was midday when the sun was highest in the sky but it was still hovering above the trees. It's kind of, it feels a little bit alien to me around the, the winter solstice, especially not so much the summer solstice, but the winter solstice. Uh, but anyway, let's take a look now at our first view then, please, of the SLU Solar Telescope. This will knock your socks off. Let's have a look, see what the sun's activity is like. Here we go. Oh, very nice indeed. Um, can you update that, please? Press play, because uh, the feed doesn't look live there. It looks like it's paused and we'll see it shimmering away. And there you can see, so this is this is such a highly specialized, uh, let's just make sure we're looking at that in full high def as well, if we can, studio. Um, so thank you very much. So yeah, that's okay. That's great. So, um, so this is the view actually that uh, SLU members get to enjoy every single day uh, during the week. And I'm just going to, uh, I'm, I'm juggling today. I'm actually controlling this telescope at the moment. So I'm just going to move it down a little bit because we can see a little bit more. And we're going to um, talk about some of the solar features and stuff like that that we can see. So I've just moved that down a little bit. So, so that's good. Now, if you've uh, got any questions for us, you can ask them in SLU chat. Oops, I just moved the telescope down a little bit too much. Come on. Well, sorry, you can't see this. There's a little bit of a delay. Um, and you'll see I've gone a little bit too far. So uh, juggling, juggling. Um, you can ask us questions in SLU chat on the website uh, at any point uh, this morning. Now then, um, I guess while we're, we're going to talk about some of the features that we can see here. Look, there's an active region. There's a filament. There's a sunspot. There's another great filament there. Look, uh, oh, some more. Uh, now, is that a filament? They look like sunspots rather than filaments. 
Ooh, I didn't spot those this morning. Look, that's where I went too far. Do you see that? So I had to go back again. Um, we're going to go on the search for some other phenomena uh, in a couple of minutes. But let's um, let's think about the solstice for a minute because uh, we haven't really kind of said what it is. Well, solstice, it, it's one of these words, like so many words in astronomy. It derives from Latin words. Um, and it's the Latin for sun is sol. Uh, it's fairly simple. And the sinster uh, is another Latin term, and that means to stand still. So you put those together, solstitium, and that roughly kind of translates to sun stand still. Um, so why does it do that? Why is the sun so low for the Northern Hemisphere uh, observers? Why is it so high for Southern Hemisphere viewers? Well, let's pull up a little uh, diagram of uh, the sun's path around the uh, throughout the year. There we go. Ah, oh, this is a great diagram. Now then, I can't quite see all that. It's a bit cropped for me a little bit. But what we can see here is we've got equinoxes and we've got solstices. Right? Solstice, I wonder if that, come on, somebody in, in chat, tell me. What is the uh, what's the plural for solstice? Is it solstice? It kind of sounds right. If it if it's not, it should be, shouldn't it? Anyway, listen. The the diagram that we're after is that one down in the left hand side. So this is for a northern. This is from the northern hemisphere. Oh, that's great. Thank you, studio. Um, and what we can see here is the sun is very very far south. It rises very far south. It culminates. That's when it's highest at midday. Um, it's the lowest culmination of the entire year. And in fact, that, um, that in, in the Canary Islands today, that happens at four minutes past one, and it's the lowest culmination of the year. But what tends to happen around the few days around the solstice is the sun appears to rise and set in roughly the same place. So our ancestors, I'm a few miles down the road from Stonehenge, loads of other stone circles, uh, loads of um, ancient buildings uh, which were put up to um, basically observe the position of the sun and moon. It looks, so if you're at Stonehenge, it looks like the sun is rising in the same place for three days in a row. That's the sun standing still. Uh, there we go. Oh, look at that. Oh, I would give anything to be there this morning. Actually, I wouldn't because um, they've closed it this morning. Uh, they were live streaming sunset, but it is such a diabolically ropey day here in the UK. It's it's over. I don't think we're going to see the sun at all today uh, other than in the slew live streams. Um, so anyway, th there there it is. Um, so a lot of people think that the solstice occurs is a day is a day long event but it's not why have we come on this morning at this ungodly hour for many people in the in the americas well it's because that sources is actually a moment in time it happens a moment in time and it's when the sun is directly over what's called the tropic of capricorn um and this year that happens at two minutes past the hour. So in a little over 15 minutes, a little under 15 minutes time. So that's the moment we're going to celebrate. Now, of course, you can celebrate the rest of the day if you really want to. Um, but um, that's marking our moment today. Um, so snap an image. If you're on the SLU website, don't forget you can snap images from any of our live feeds. Snap an image at two minutes past the hour and you will have captured our sun at the very moment of solstice. Let's go over to our little um, actual tilt, the Earth tilt diagram, if we may, um, because this, this is a picture that paints a thousand words as well. So what's the difference between an equinox, summer solstice, winter solstice, as you've got here? So there we are over on the right-hand side. That is the Earth's relationship. So that imagine the sun is over to the left of this diagram. And today, right at this moment, with that right hand diagram. Earth's tilt 23 and a half degrees. That doesn't change as 
the Earth orbits the Sun. Now, you can see today the southern hemisphere is fully tilted towards the Sun. Northern hemisphere is not. That's why we've got the longest nights in the, today in the, in the northern hemisphere. And down in the south, they've got the longest days. Now, have a look at the very top of that diagram. If you're above the Arctic Circle, the sun doesn't rise at all today. If you're sitting on the Arctic Circle, that's a pretty depressing thought, isn't it? But if you're in Antarctica, where we're going on our SLU expedition, the sun doesn't set today. You can see that it's going to be in daylight all the time. And basically, the sun will hover along the horizon, which I, I, I would love to see that. actually. But then we've got uh, the equinoxes. So that happens twice a year. And that's when the tilt, you can see the tilt is towards or away from the sun. But both hemispheres get the same amount of sunlight um, as each other. And then you can see the, the summer solstice over there is the total reverse. The northern hemisphere is then pointing towards the sun. So I just wanted to see if we've got, um, have we got our August uh, panorama time lapse studio? Because that's a, that's a pretty cool uh, description of this um, or illustration of it. While well, they're pulling that up, um, I'm going to spend, um, let's actually, let's go back to the live feed, actually, studio. Um, oh, I've just noticed studio. Nice one. I've just seen your um, your cool graphics down on the right hand side. Oh, very nice studio. Well done. Um, let's go back to the live um, Canary Islands uh, solar telescope view. Here we go, because we're going to talk just for five minutes on the kind of features that we get to see uh, in this particular uh, view. And let's just uh, I'm going to scroll down a little bit again on there. So I'm moving the telescope. Um, so that we point the sun up. And if we've got time, in fact, I'll tell you what, um, we've got we've got a, this great little yoga session later uh, with Caroline Kinsolvik. Oh, it's just gone too far, okay. Um, while that's happening, keep your eyes on some of these views because you'll still be able to see this camera up in the top right-hand side. And I'll tune the telescope to so that we can see some of the other features um, in this live view. So what are the kind of features that we see? In fact, um, Studio, we've got a, a little graphic, haven't we, marked up uh, with some of the solar features that we normally see in the solar telescope? And call that we have got. Oh, we've got some great features coming up. Uh, right, here we go. So uh, I can't quite see all of that. Can we see the top of it? Because we're missing prominences. Prominences are... The, the streams of charged solar material that flow out from the solar atmosphere. And then they come down again and they follow magnetic field lines and they appear on the edge. That's it, so we can see one top left and we'll go on the hunt for those a little bit later. So when Caroline's doing her yoga session, we'll tune this up and see if we can find any prominences today. Uh, they come in a huge variety, these prominences coming off from the edge of the sun. Um, You've got arches, hedgerow prominences, pillar prominences, and we'll see what others we can find a little bit later. Now, the other uh, very obvious thing that which we did see on the live stream a little bit a, a little earlier are called filaments. And those are basically prominences, but they're seen against the face of the sun. So there's still this huge arc of plasma coming out from the sun, but we're just seeing them kind of silhouetted against the sun. We've also got plages. Look at that. You can see that bright area uh, in, in this particular one. That's a plage means f is French for beach. Now, those are kind of patchy brightenings on the solar disk, and they usually are found around or very close to what are called active regions, and they can last for several days. Some of the ones that we were watching last week lasted all week long. We've got sunspots. Now, you can see there's only a tiny little sunspot there. Now, sunspots are they're temporary. They're also associated with these active regions that we see, um, but they're normally better seen in what's called white light. And white light is how you see the sun if you've got eclipse glasses on, uh, because they're not. They don't show up in this special telescope very well because they're actually in the layer of the sun, slightly below. Uh, and then we've got these active regions, which if we go back to the live view, I, th I think we've got an active region in view today. It's quite subtle today uh, in comparison to last week, but 
in the live view, I saw a sneaky view of something that looks like it's going to be swinging into view. So, OK, I, I was just about to point to my screen. You can't see it, can you? So you can see on the right hand side, there's a couple of patches which are slightly brighter and they've got some darker material around them as well. Those are active regions. But look at about the eight o'clock position. Right. That is looking fairly promising to me. That looks like a very large active region, potentially a sunspot coming into view now. When we go through our yoga session a little bit later, um, when we're doing that, try and keep an eye on the screen um, and we'll tune up the telescope because I bet you we'll find a prominence down there. Now then, um, I think it's probably time, isn't it? Because I've been talking, so I need a little bit of uh, a few breathing exercises, I think, to kind of calm me down on uh, December solstice. Uh, I would like to welcome our very special guest this morning, actress and award-winning, award-winning yogi, Caroline Kinsolving. Caroline, hello. Good morning. Uh, it is, it is what, 10 to 5? Is that, is it 10 to 5 in the morning for you, Caroline? Okay, so, so that, that kind of infers that you got up rather than are still up. Have you actually had some sleep last night? I did. I, I did. worked really hard at this project. I, I made a lot of <laughs> tea. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. Yeah, uh, I've, I've had copious amounts of, copious, copious amounts you know, of uh, coffee this morning. Um, uh, anyway, we'll, um, we'll try and get uh, Caroline's uh, video up and running. That would be All right, good. See me? Hmm. Uh, Let me try again. Now can I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Um, let's let's call Caroline back in again and see if it clears that problem. Um, and in the meantime, we will go on the hunt um, for uh, some other solar features. Now then, uh, bear in mind that um, I. Oh, I tell you what. Let's let's have a look. Let's just see if we can find um, find a prominence. So do excuse me. I'm just going over to another machine while we get. Ca oh, no, oh, there's Caroline. All oh, right. So there we, we were teasing people there, Caroline. I was about to tune the telescope to see if we can see a prominence, and we've got you though. Here we go. Because it would have been a little bit awkward if we couldn't see you while we're kind That's of doing awkward. a bit of a yoga session. Now, anyway, listen. In in celebration of the more spiritual nature of a solstice. You're gonna take us through some simple breathing and yoga exercises at, at the end of the show. Uh, but we, we're gonna chat a bit, and because we're gonna we're gonna kind of celebrate together, I'm not quite sure how, uh, but celebrate together the moment of solstice at two minutes past the hour. But can we start off with some basics for those of us, and I, I say us, because it does include me, who don't really know very much about yoga when and where did yoga even start let's go right back to basics god um many hundreds of years ago in india um okay. and the reason one of the reasons it started was uh there's a lot of belief that meditation is very very good for your brain and one of the questions i had for you paul is what intentions are you setting your, for yourself during this solstice and what will you be doing for the rest of this morning <laughs> the rest of this morning well uh, over while you're doing the session i'm looking forward to actually sitting back and watching a, a slew show because i don't new, normally get to do that but um I want to come out of it actually a little bit more chilled than I feel now because doing you know, live casts is always a little bit more, you know, I can feel some tension in the shoulders growing and I can feel that I'm a little bit short of breath and all that kind of stuff. But uh, then afterwards, of course, we're prepping for the entire day on our right. great conjunction live cast this evening. So my, my, my day of stress is going to go up and down. It's kind of up preparing for this show, but you're going to bring that down and then it'll gradually grow during the day and then hopefully after tonight's show um i'll i'll do some of the exercises maybe that you're going to teach us how to do <laughs> so that i can chill again in the <laughs> evening but um so is you were talking about you know well-being there is yoga focused on physical or mental or a mixture of both is there a balance there great question both um so uh 
yoga is the practice of breath. And so I'm glad you have talked about the breath and you've done a big breath just now. And I hope you'll do that throughout your day so that you don't have to be stressed. And what I was saying before is they found that meditation is very good for the brain, focusing, calming the nervous system. But it's hard to sit down for a long extended period of time, especially on a floor, if you haven't moved your body around. So part of the reason yoga started was to move the body around, release some of the tension, the tightness, and then be able to sit for a while. Um, So what you just did when you went, (sighs) you just, yeah, do that. (laughs) Um, You just calmed your nervous system. So when you're performing or when you're speaking for a while or when you've got a lot of ideas coming into your brain, Or when you're having a difficult conversation or reading the news, you usually breathe about this much into your breath capacity, which is all the way down to your belly button. So if you actually just take a moment, we can all do this right now, um, to inhale through your nose like you're smelling a flower and bring it all the way down through your throat, expand your lungs, fill up your belly, hold it in for a moment, just so you can register in your brain how it feels to be full of oxygen. And then do a nice exhale, like a very full and complete exhale. And just notice what may have happened in your body. Anything? (laughs) My shoulders are certainly two inches lower. I think the problem is I, I actually took my breath in when you first said it uh, and then you were carrying <laughs> on going. So I was kind of holding my breath for slightly too long. Then. <laughs> that's OK, actually, that's that's good. <laughs> oh, is it? OK, but that's you know, very you, good. You, you if feel you it. hold it in. And we, yeah. we did this yeah. yesterday, didn't we, where, when we were talking and, you know, it's, it's something I do do at, at, at night when I'm in bed and it's just you don't realize it's such a simple exercise that I'm going to start doing far more regularly when I'm just sitting there working and desk bound. You it's, it's, I feel the tension. I I, I don't beforehand. I don't recognize that my shoulders are tense and my body is tense, but after you do that, it kind of slaps you around the face, just how tense your body was before you did it. And it's such a simple thing to do. Yes. And it's amazing how many very, very simple things we don't do (laughs) because we complicate everything and we get into our own dramas and everything. But um, yes, that breathing is exactly spot on what you said. So those of us who are desk bound, are there (laughs) any other simple things that that yoga can bring us, which are going to help, you know, our physical and mental well-being, you know, when we're just sitting down i mean i'm basically in this position all day long um don't tell me that i'll come over there and make you move <laughs> so what, what fly can I, across what can the I pond. Do? and most of our viewers or a lot of our viewers have exactly the same kind of working day what can we do yeah yeah sure shall i should shall i take you through a little bit of desk yeah yoga? why not yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay um so I'm just going to back you up here a little bit. Welcome to my kitchen. <laughs> so it's still dark um, outside there, Caroline. Your, yeah, it your is actually. It's a bit dark and murky. Yeah, <laughs> that's the night <laughs> right there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what's very cool about this house is that the sun comes up right there. So oh, should it make an appearance during this okay. morning? We'll see it. Um, right, so okay, so. Uh, yoga. This is my kind of exercise, something that I don't have to stand up for, right? Yeah, so really, I I hope you all can just give this a shot. And what's a good test is just see, just see if it makes a difference. Just five minutes. So um, just begin by uh, taking that deep breath in your nose, filling up, holding it in for a moment, registering how it feels to feel full, and then exhale. Right? And if if you're going to do anything, just do that. Um, And then uh, see if you can just bring one ear to one shoulder and breathe right to the side of that neck, right? So just breathe into that side, right? Do you feel anything? (laughs) Yeah, it cricked. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) My neck clicked, which is kind of showing I need to do this. (laughs) 
Yeah, so all we're doing is this. It's so simple, but my goodness, do we need it. So I hope everyone in the studio is doing this as well. Yeah, I'm in the, in the studio. Big breath in the nose. Oh, good. <laughs> and exhale through the mouth. And then just ear over to the other uh, shoulder and breathe into that side of the neck. Right. So when I say breathe into that side of the neck, I realize you're breathing into your belly. But if you can just focus your brain. Um, one thing I wanted to make sure to say is that tonight or to this morning, <laughs> whatever, um, is much about connection. Right. The connection, the conjunction, the connection and yoga. You can lift your head back up. Yoga is about connecting the brain and the body through the breath. Right. So okay. it's a whole thing. So we want to we want to make sure that we come out of whatever yoga we've done, which is even just now what we did. Very simple. I'll keep going in a minute. We want to make sure that we come out whole. Right. So usually, especially smart people, <laughs> their their body is like from here to here in their brain. And we want to make sure we like feel our toes and remember that the toes are connected to our ears, are connected to our fingers, are connected to our shoulders. I hope that makes sense and I don't sound crazy. All right, so <laughs> inhale. I can see some of hey, your viewers. Hey, Caroline, oh. hey, Caroline, Caroline, we should, we should pause for a moment because we yeah. should go back to the live feed, full screen if we can, studio, because we're on a bit of a countdown now to, oh, gosh. this is when the sun, our local star, I guess, you know, this is this is why this is you know we've done this kind of more spiritual twist on this show because you know scientifically does it matter that the sun is lowest in the sky but here we've got this life-giving orb in our sky it's the furthest south of the entire year in about 15 seconds time and different cultures different people for millennia have been marking this moment. And in the Northern Hemisphere, it's so important because the days are going to start getting longer. You know, and it's, yeah, I think it's nice to, that's it. That's the moment of solstice. We've just seen the sun when it's at its southernmost point. So from now on, Caroline, for us lot up here in the Northern Hemisphere, we can kind of start celebrating longer days. I'm an astronomer, so it does mean shorter nights. So, you know, it's uh, it's a little bit um, balanced, but of course we've got uh, our Chile Observatory in the Southern Hemisphere, which means that uh, the nights down there are getting longer. So spare a thought for those in the th Southern Hemisphere, who although it's officially the start of summer there and the start of winter in the Northern Hemisphere, it's always a little bit strange, I think. You know, we're starting winter, but the days start getting longer. And that's because there's this kind of time lag um, in our, our climate uh, where things don't start getting cold until we're into those seasons or hot down in the south. But anyway, Caroline, we should go back to you. Now, if there are any other simple desk things we can do, we can whip through those. Um, otherwise, you're welcome to go straight over to you know, the other session that you were going to do for us, it's entirely up to you, isn't it? Can we do a couple more desk yeah. ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, so I, I want to do this desk. later on. <laughs> so I'll take you through the desk stuff and then go right into the, uh, the sun salutation, very basic stuff. Cool. But everyone can try this. So yeah. um, you, I'm going to back you up again. <laughs> um, so uh, wherever you are sitting at your desk, you can lift your arms all the way up. Take a nice deep breath in as you lift them. Reach for the sky and collapse. I'm here, Caroline. I've got a Christmas tree on one side. <laughs> and a, and Mind the Christmas the tree. <laughs> <laughs> so press your palms all the way up. Take a deep breath in. And on your exhale, bend over to one side. Doesn't matter which side. And feel that opening up your ribs, side body. And then with the next exhale, release that arm down. And if you're just on a chair, you can just like hang it down. And if you're near a floor, you can bend into it. Breathe. Good. If you hear squeaking, <laughs> my dog has just woken up and has a dog toy and I'm not going to get it again. <laughs> 
So that's your um, celestial music, your yoga music. So bring the back of that lifted hand to the knee and take a twist here. Just twist the spine. Give me two more deep breaths here. So again, inhale through the nose like you're smelling a flower. And exhale through one more. Nice. And I come back around and let's do that on the other side. Inhale all the way up. Take a nice deep breath in. Feel your spine elongating all the way up to the sky. Press through the palms. Really get those ribs up out of the hips, right? Getting length in the torso. And then on your exhale, bend over to the other side. Feel that through the ribs, the torso. Take another nice, bright, beautiful, deep breath. And then exhale, release that hand down or that arm down and open up the ribs even more. You that arm straight over your ear. Reach through the fingertips, right? So again, it's all about connection. Feeling that, that is, and energy. that makes a huge difference. As soon as I concentrated on my fingertips, the rest of my arm extended more. Oh, brilliant. Oh. You're advanced. You're an advanced yogi, Paul. I, I'm officially then, a yogi now, am I? <laughs> it's true. <laughs> so bring the back of that hand to the knee and take a twist here. Give me two deep breaths again. Now, one note about the breath is um, the breath is like a cycle, right? And the inhale kind of brings energy in and the exhale releases tension and stress. So you want to feel like it's a wave in the ocean, like good. Give me one. Are you twisting? <laughs> Give me I, one I'm more. twisting as much as I can, given that I'm trying to look at my screen. But I, I was really concentrating on the <laughs> breathing there because the, the breathing, okay. it, it's, it, it amazes me that such a simple thing as mm -hmm. just that breathing exercise has yes. such a huge amount of change on my body. And the, the <laughs> yeah, I, I said it before. It's not until I do that that I realize how tense my body was before, Caroline. You know, and right. that's, I, I think that I'm going to, I'm going to make sure that I, I concentrate very much on the breathing, but just doing those couple of, yeah, you know, and I am in a very, very confined space here. So this is the <laughs> worst it can kind of be. But if I'm at my normal desk, I'll be able to do this better. But already, just with those few simple stretches, I can feel that I've stretched things that don't normally get stretched in that way, which is good, I guess. Yeah. I haven't pulled a muscle or anything. So, um, <laughs> That's Caroline, good. That's good. let's, for, for those people who are not desk bound, you're going to take us through. So, we're going to carry on watching these live views of the sun over on the right hand side, but you're going to take us through some other exercises that viewers can do. Um, I'm going to be, just so viewers know, um, changing the view a little bit on the solar uh, telescope to uh, try and track down a prominence and if we can we'll zoom in a little bit on that as well but uh, Caroline uh, for the moment over to you. Thank you Paul. This is great. This is, uh, this is definitely by far the most unique yoga class I've ever taught. So <laughs> so that um, those of you who are still in the chair or on your mat um, or your floor again you can do this in bed even you don't need you don't need anything for yoga. That's one thing I like to remind people of. You don't need fancy yoga pants or fancy yoga mats. You just need a floor in your body, which I really love about it. So um, I'd love you to just bring your hands to your knees. And if you are sitting on the floor, you can cross your legs if that's comfortable. And just lean back and open up these muscles in the back body. Right? And bring your chin to your chest. And then you're going to inhale up. Arch your spine and reach your heart forward. So um, another really important part of yoga is just uh, coming out of it with a really healthy spine. When your spine is healthy, your, your skeleton is happy. And when your skeleton is happy and your spine is long, your brain can function even better. So if you can circle your ribs now as you arch and round, you're just making big, big circles with your torso now. Rounding neck, 
and coming forward and then let's reverse the direction and you'll find that as you circle your spine you're having a little dialogue with these um, tendons that connect your upper body to your lower body your basically your hips to your lower back right this is the spot my desk workers this is the spot that gets very very tight so just doing little circles and you don't even need to do big circles you can just do these little ones moving the ribs around right right so now we are going to um come forward onto your hands and your knees and again with that theme of having a happy spine spread your fingers wide and inhale the tailbone up so inhale through your nose and lift your tailbone up look at the sky <laughs> and then exhale tuck your tailbone under bring your chin to your chest so this is called um this is a cat <laughs> and this oh, sorry this is a cow <laughs> and this is a cat it's early uh, <laughs> so keep breathing here moving with the breath and then if you want you can kind of set yourself free i like to say that um moving freely your only restriction is that your hands and your knees are on the ground but you want to just kind of get into your unique body on this unique morning um every body is different so another part of the yoga that i teach is to really listen to your body and give it what it needs so really i just want you to move in a way that feels good and i always like to wonder what this world would be like if uh, every leader and every person did this movement simple simple movement of circling the hips the shoulder the neck and the head freely just for about a minute as you breathe that really 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 deep breath mm, okay and now of course if you hear background sounds my dog is eating his breakfast fantastic so <laughs> Um, knees come apart on the mat and big toes together and you're going to come into what's called child's pose this is a wonderful stretch in the shoulders opens up the lower back breathe here really breathe here two more deep breaths <laughs> good and then see if you can tuck your toes under for an active child's pose one thing I'm, I'm big on in my class is just to stretch out the feet as much as we stretch out the rest of the body, because indeed, often our feet are our most important base, right? So press into the arches and the toes, breathe into the feet. And then as you exhale, see if you can straighten your legs and lift your hips up, bending one knee and then the other. Here we are in the famous downward dog. So just breathe into the backs of the legs. First downward dog of this cycle. Um, and in downward dog, you want to make sure that your chest is reaching towards your thighs and your hips are reaching towards the sky and your heels are reaching towards the ground. So you're reaching with your body in three different directions. Take a nice deep breath here, and then come on back down onto your hands and your knees. Bring your left hand under the face on the ground, and inhale the right arm all the way up. Stack your shoulders, spread through your fingers. Take a deep breath in your nose, and as you exhale, slide your right arm through and bring your left arm around your torso. So this one's for you, Paul, to open up those shoulders. So anyone with tight shoulders, this is a fantastic um, pose as it twists the spine and opens up the shoulder in a really nice, relaxing way. Um, for those of you who do work at your desk, shoulder openers are going to be really key because we tend to round our shoulders when we're looking at our phone, when we're cold, um, when we're sitting at a desk, when we're driving in a car, we round our shoulders. Okay, so exhale out of there, 
press your left hand into the ground to come up. And let's switch that up. This time, the right hand under the face. Inhale, the left arm up. And slide the left arm through. Come on to the left shoulder. Wrap the right arm around. Right hand to the inside of the left thigh. If you can reach, otherwise just have it gently resting there. Give me two deep breaths. Inhale through your nose. And exhale. You can always sigh it out. That's a very nice way to release tension is to just sigh it out. <laughs> Give me one more. <sighs> Excellent. And then come on back into that child's pose again. <sighs> Tuck the toes under. Get that active child's pose to stretch out the feet. Take a nice deep breath in your nose. And exhale, stretch those legs downward, facing dog. And then you're going to slowly walk your feet. And um, I like to call this a monk's walk. Right? So monks pay attention to every footprint they make on the earth. It's like a moving meditation. So we're going to take that slowly as you walk your feet towards your hands and stretch out the legs. And when your feet arrive at the very top of the hand, hang over. And you guys keep hanging over there. I'm going to back this up just a little more. <laughs> okay, great. So, and um, if anybody in the studio wants to let me know if I'm running out of time, that's, that's welcome. So, um, Right hand under the face, bend the right knee. Inhale the left arm up to twist the spine. Again, twist for the spine. Just keeps it so young and healthy. Right? So if you just do a few twists during the day, that's going to be really good. Just switch that up. Left hand under the face. Inhale the right arm up. Take a nice deep breath in the nose. Exhale, hang over. Let the head go. Let the neck go. Imagine your head is like a heavy bowling ball or a watermelon. A little bend in the knees and start to roll up slowly, vertebrae by vertebrae by vertebrae. Do focus on doing that nice and slowly. And then when you rise up, oh, look at that sun, my goodness, beautiful, very special. Bring your hands to your heart for a moment. This is a very simple pose called uh, Tadasana Mountain Pose. And uh, just want to feel your weight in your feet. You want to feel the strength rising up through your legs, the lightness of your upper body. Bring your hands to your heart right here. And then with a big inhale, full body inhale, open your arms up. Give yourself a little back bend. Reach through your fingertips. Reach through your toes. And I'd love you to circle your wrists all the way behind you. Again, this is for... This is for Paul and my desk workers, my computer workers. Get into the wrists and the fingers. Clasp your hands behind you. Press your palms together. Take a deep breath in. And then exhale, palms together. Come on down. Let your go. And hang here. So this pose right here, if you can take breaks from your work when you're at the desk, the computer, and do this every now and then. This is the one. <laughs> Good. Hands come down the backs of the legs and around to the front of the shins. Extend the arms. Look forward. Take a deep breath in. And exhale back into your downward facing dog. Stretch the hips to the sky, the chest to the thighs, the heels to the ground. And then inhale into what's called a plank pose. All right, this is going to create a little heat. You're going to feel some strength. Good for you. Take a nice deep breath in and then bring your knees, your chest, and your chin down to the ground. Move your shoulders up and back, coming into a cobra. Good. So another shoulder open here. Lift your heart. Lift your chest. Take a deep breath in. Exhale. Tuck the toes under. Come into that active child's pose. Stretch out the arms. Breathe into the lower back. 
Exhale, downward facing dog, straighten those legs. And breathe as you walk your feet. Another monk's walk all the way up to the top of the mat. I'm going to do something like that two more times, rolling up. And then we'll finish. Bring your hands to your heart. Inhale all the way up again. Big breath in, saluting the sun. And then circle the wrists all the way behind you. This time, clasp one finger differently than you did before, right? So we do it like that. If that's your go-to, you're just going to switch your fingers behind you. Palms together. Take a deep breath in. And on the exhale, dive your heart forward. Let your head go. Spread your toes. Feel that opening in the shoulders. Exhale, hands come down the backs of the legs, around to the front of the shins. Extend the arms. Look forward. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, downward facing dog. With the breath, we move with the breath. Inhale to plant. And then you can either bring your knees down or if you're feeling funky this morning, um, come through a full chaturanga, right? A yoga push up, elbows in, hovering down to the ground, push through your toes and lift into an upward dog, right? So with upward dog, your hands and the tops of your feet are the only things on the ground. So feel that heat in the back of the arms. Take a nice deep breath in. And again, exhale, tuck the toes under, active child's pose. Take a deep breath again. Exhale, straighten the legs. Inhale, look between the thumbs. And just to wake us up this morning, bend your knees. Exhale, hop your feet forward. Fold forward, nice deep forward bend. And then again, um, rise up. You can either roll up vertebrae by vertebrae, or this time you can do a reverse swan bed with a nice long spine. Inhale, up to that sky. And <laughs> hands to your heart. And let's do that one more time really briefly with the breath, right? Like a cycle. Inhale up. And this time, exhale, swan dive down, open arms. Listen for your own breath. Inhale. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Push through the toes. Inhale, upward dog. And exhale, downward dog. Good. And then come on into your child's pose and you'll stretch here rest here and i'm just going to check in with the studio because perhaps paul wants to say something <laughs> otherwise i'll just going and going and going Everybody? um i was just wondering is that the first time petruchio upstaged upstaged you is, is that the first time that that's you've been upstaged by your lovely little dog Absolutely not. <laughs> That's the 537th <laughs> time. <laughs> okay, so you're marking. I had a treat and prepared and everything. <laughs> oh, brilliant. I, I love that he, he started with toy and then moved on to breakfast. But uh, Caroline, I was just uh, jumping in because um, you're going to wind up in, in a second with uh, our final resting pose. Um, but yeah. uh, I just wanted to remind viewers that uh, in a little over nine hours eight and a half hours time we've got the great christmas conjunction our public star party uh which starts at 2 p.m eastern uh that's 1900 utc 12 30 a.m uh indian time so this is a this uh solstice show is really well timed for india but unfortunately the great conjunction isn't uh, i'm going to be joined on that by slew astronomers bob berman and Dr. Mike Shaw. And we're going to be talking, we're going to, we've got live views, obviously, this is SLU, so we've got live views of the conjunction. But more importantly, we're going to tell viewers how they can witness this shortly after dark uh, from their own backyards, because it is a 
lovely, lovely sight if you've got binoculars or a small telescope. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to hop in, Caroline, and say that, and and also just uh, thank you very much for coming along to help us celebrate December solstice today. So oh, I'll leave you honor. to it. It's a total honor, and I, I love sharing the stage with you. Um, well, thank okay. you very much, Caroline. I'll leave you to it. All right, but I want a full report. I expect you to do this every day from now on. I uh, more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so if everybody could just actually get on your back now, again, this can be on your floor, your couch, your bed, um, but this will feel very nice for your spine. Um, let me back you up there. So you're just going to roll down, keep your knees bent, and I'd love it if you just rocked your knees side to side. And again, these are just gentle twists on the spine. This is completely rejuvenating for your whole body, but especially the back. And then if you can, you're going to hug your right knee in, lengthen your left leg long on the ground. Take a nice deep breath in the nose again, and exhale that right knee over to the left side. Open the right arm up and turn your whole head and neck so that your right ear is towards the ground and you're looking towards your right thumb. Let me just move my camera a little. Just take another di nice deep breath there. Okay, good. This is another one that you could do in bed before you sleep or right when you wake up for a very happy spine. Come back onto your back. And hug your left knee in, straighten your right leg long. Take a nice deep breath in your nose. Exhale your left knee over to the right side and open your left arm up. <laughs> if you heard that crack, that was my spine. <laughs> Bring your left ear towards the ground and look at that left thumb. Open your fingers wide. And it's just feeling the energy in every pose you do with yoga. You want to feel the energy reaching beyond you. Um, for lack of a better term. All right, take a nice deep breath in, and you're going to come into what's called your Shavasana. So this is a very morbid name. It's actually the translation is corpse pose. But there's something quite nice about that because it just relaxes you totally, and you're sort of giving in. Nothing to do. And um, put a little space between your thighs, a little space between your arms and your torso, palms facing up. Shoulders move down, relax your jaw, relax the space between your eyebrows, relax your tongue. Let your breath be really easy now. And you almost want to feel like your body is getting heavier and sinking into the ground. And I'm gonna, you're going to stay here. I'm going to sit up for a moment. Um, so Shavasana is the most important pose in every practice because it allows us to sort of absorb all the goodness of all the poses that we visited today, which there were several. Um, and I just wanna add that um, this program is so much about cycles, right? Cycles in the universe, cycles in the, um, the solstice and uh, the seasons. And again, the breath is also a cycle, right? So again, that wave, you can just feel a nice calm wave going through your body now. The inhale, exhale, crashing down. And so at the end of all my classes, I read a poem. And speaking of waves, um, this poem is uh, about the stars and the sea. So this is by Jim Harrison, and it's called Bridge. Most of my life was spent building a bridge out over the sea. Though the sea was too wide, I'm proud of the bridge hanging in the pure sea air. Mikado came for a visit and we sat on the end of the bridge, which was his idea. Now that I'm old, the work goes slowly. Ever nearer death, I like it out here. High above the sea, bundled up for the Arctic storms of late fall the resounding crash and moan of the sea, the hundred-foot depth of the green troughs. 
Sometimes the sea roars and howls like the animal it is, a continent wide and alive. What beauty in this, the darkest music over which you can hear the lightest music of human behavior, the tender connection between men and galaxies. So I sit on the edge, wagging my feet above the abyss. Tonight, the moon will be in my lap. This is my job, to study the universe from my bridge. I have the sky, the sea, the faint green streak Canadian forest on the far shore. And with that, laying on your back, you'll just take a nice, easy breath in to bring yourself back into your body, into your space, into this morning, this day, this, these first moments of this new cycle. And over to you. Or or not. <laughs> we can keep going. Um, so as you breathe in, maybe twiddle your toes and fiddle your fingertips to bring yourself gently back into the day. That's a really nice thing to do. You don't want to just jump up um, after a resting pose. You want to just move slowly. So then circle your wrists and circle your ankles. <sighs> And then hug your knees into your chest. Right? So hug those knees into your chest. Give yourself a nice little hug, thanking yourself for making this time. And then you can roll onto your left side using your arm as a pillow. Just take a breath in the fetal position and sort of absorb any goodness that you may have found through this practice, right? Any of that relaxing. Um, any good thoughts, any good feelings, so you can really absorb them. Um, and as you come up, that's one of the more important things about a yoga practice is if we're practicing on the mat, um, hopefully we can bring some of that out into the world. And so the next time you do have a difficult conversation or you read the news um, or you're in a stressful situation, remember that there's a tool that's for free you can use it immediately. All you have to do is this. And then, okay. And then you'll be moving and acting and thinking from a place of peace. And I just say a quick, uh, what they say at the end of all yoga classes, namaste, which means I salute you. And um, Thank you so much, and thank you to SLU. This is um, 